Howdy folks, it's me, Josh. Anyone could tell you that Germany has had a major impact on recent history, being a major player in both world wars and the center of the Cold War, just to name a few. But if it wasn't for a couple very specific events in the mid-1800s, Germany as we know it never would have even existed. Germany as we know it today only first came into existence in the year 1871 with the proclamation of the German Empire. But before that, Germany was just a giant mess of a bunch of kingdoms, principalities, duchies, and whatever the heck else you can think of. In the beginning of the 19th century, Germany was sort of united under the rule of the Holy Roman Empire, which was dominated by the Austrian Habsburgs and incredibly inefficient. Until, that is, a goofy French weirdo named Napoleon decided to screw some things up and invade all of Europe. And in 1806, after having resoundingly defeated the Holy Roman Empire, Napoleon decided to create what was known as the Confederation of the Rhine, with himself as its protector. Now, if France had two main exports during the Napoleonic Wars, they would be liberalism and nationalism. And after having been occupied by the French, you can bet that the Germans were feeling a little bit nationalistic, wanting to kick out Napoleon. And that wish would eventually be granted with Napoleon's defeat and exile in 1815. But that nationalism was still there as many Germans began pushing for the creation of one single German state. Now, I've already mentioned the Austrians who had for centuries been the dominant power of Germany. But German power number two would be the Prussians, a North German behemoth and master of all things military. For about a hundred years at this point, Prussia and Austria had been at each other's throats trying to dominate Germany for themselves. But the Austrian Empire was still, for the most part, the dominant power of Germany. And under their, and Prussia's, staunchly conservative governments, they wanted to have nothing to do with these liberal ideas of unification. That is, until in 1848, Europe exploded. In 1848, after decades of suppression by the dominant conservative monarchies of Europe, liberals across Europe revolted, demanding reforms in their respective nations. And in Germany, this took the form of numerous liberals calling for the creation of a united German Empire. Now, still neither Prussia nor Austria wanted to have anything to do with this, and without either of their support, the movement died down. However, those pushes for unification still lingered to some degree, which one man was about to exploit. In 1862, after a dispute with the Prussian Landtag, which was essentially the Prussian parliament, King Wilhelm I, begrudgingly, decided to appoint a man named Otto von Bismarck to the position of Minister President of Prussia. And Bismarck had an idea. Bismarck saw Prussia's growing position in Germany, and with Austria so divided among its numerous different nationalities, the pushes for German unification posed an opportunity for Prussia to ride the waves of nationalism, uniting Germany in order to expand its own influence. Bismarck went to war with Denmark first in order to resolve a dispute over some land in Schleswig-Holstein, but also partly to bait Austria into a war. And that it would accomplish. Both sides knew that a war was coming, but Bismarck greatly feared what would happen if other powers got involved, particularly France. And so, in order to keep them out of the war, Bismarck met with Napoleon III of France, promising vague territorial compensation in exchange for neutrality. Upon the outbreak of the war, the Prussians, with their technological and military superiority, absolutely demolished the Austrians. And the Prussians could have pushed all the way to Vienna and completely annihilated the Austrians. And if King Wilhelm had had his way, they would have. But Bismarck, fearing that other powers would get involved and destroy Prussia if they did something so drastic, begged the king not to go that far. In the end, Bismarck would win out, and after only a month of war, the Austro-Prussian War ended in a decisive Prussian victory, as Prussia created the North German Confederation, opening the way for another war with France and the creation of the German Empire in 1871. But what if that changed? What if, in an alternate timeline, King Wilhelm ignored Bismarck and kept pushing all the way to Vienna? 
In this timeline, disregarding Bismarck's warnings, Wilhelm continues pushing and lays siege to the city of Vienna in hopes of greater gains from the Austrians. But as Bismarck had feared, a Prussian siege of Vienna would spark international outrage against Prussia as numerous foreign powers would rally to the aid of the Austrians. In particular, would be France under Napoleon III. Napoleon III long sought to annex territories west of the Rhine in an attempt to restore the so-called natural borders of France. And so, with this opportunity, he would quickly invade the Prussian Rhineland as Prussia is forced to divide its forces, being crushed by the pushes from both France and Austria. With this Prussian defeat, any hopes of a Prussian unification of Germany would be completely dashed. And in the aftermath, France would once again push their influence into Germany. In our timeline, the French had not only held a meeting with the Prussians to sell their neutrality, but also with the Austrians. And in that meeting, Austria had promised that, if they won, France would be able to establish a puppet state along the Rhine. So, after victory, it's very likely that Napoleon III would follow through with this, establishing the Kingdom of the Rhine from the Prussian Rhineland. The loss of the Rhineland would be a major loss for Prussia, not only because of how large the territory was, but also because it was the industrial heart of Germany. And after having lost that, the Prussians would be greatly weakened as France grows in its influence across Germany. As a result, Germany would generally come under split French and Austrian influence, with France growing in its position in the west and Austria solidifying its hold over the rest of South Germany without Prussian interference. And meanwhile, Napoleon III would also likely begin putting greater pressure on the Low Countries, seeking the annexation of Belgium and Luxembourg. However, that's not to say that the Prussians would just sit there and let their influence be destroyed. No, they would be furious. Wanting to regain their former status in Germany, they would very quickly form close ties with Italy and Russia, who both held grievances against France and Austria. Italy, because they wanted Italian lands held by Austria and Savoy and Nice from France, and Russia because they wanted to dominate the Balkans over Austria and blamed France for Polish rebellions they had faced. But without the unification of Germany completely reshaping the balance of power in Europe, we don't see the same scramble for alliances that we did in our timeline as Britain never sees as much of a need to engage in continental affairs. However, they would still be pissed about French expansionism, and so they'd probably cooperate with France's enemies in order to weaken them. As a result, the Franco-British alliance never ends up forming, as the two remain staunch enemies, and World War I as we know it never happens. Instead, smaller conflicts between the great powers would emerge, and with Austria's weakening, it's very likely that France would end up dominating Germany, and as a result, Europe as a whole. In the end though, with Prussia's plans laid in ruin, the French remain as the dominant military power in Europe, and as the House of Bonaparte remains on the throne, the French continue to push for expansion and domination of the continent. But time will only tell if this will once again lead to yet another Great War. As I'm sure some of you may have already noticed, this video was a remake of a video that I had made a long time ago for Mr. Z on this same topic about three years ago. Jeez, has it already been that long? But anyways, as the very first alternate history scenario I had ever written, there were a lot of problems with that video and I didn't want to leave such a good idea for a scenario in such an undercooked state. And I'm sure that I'll do this with plenty of my other older videos too. But hey, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to stick around for more. And hey, you could also maybe subscribe or something. So that's it for today's video. Well, till next time, see ya.